All right, welcome back, everybody. We are back to making tanks. So this is probably going to take me a little bit of time. It's more going to be tedious than anything. As usual, I will include the instructions as a PDF in the comments section of the video. Well, actually, in the description, rather, not the comment section. You guys are the comments. If you, once, and if, uh, if, you, if you enjoyed it, if this works for you, hit the like, subscribe button, let me know, and, and I'll spread the love, guys. So our goal today is to add... Player 2, have player 2 shoot, and then eventually have them destroying each other. So the first thing we're going to do is start adding in player 1 and player 2. And I'm going to do it over here. And it's going to pop up, of course. I'm going to add player 2 body. Yep. So on and so forth. Now, don't forget that the hot spot on this thing is at 1614. Okay, add it over here. Then we're going to right click, insert object active. Once again, we're going to add the turret. Player two turret. That's a different color because it's NAS. This one's going to be 3 3. Cool. Now, don't forget to rename your objects. Capital P2 body. Capital P to capital T U R R E T or turret. Capital P to body, capital P to turret. Now, um, after we've done that, right, what I want to do first is I want to come in here and start organizing this code. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to right click a number and do insert a comment. And I'm going to put Player one. Now, uh, what I'm going to do too is just change some fonts to white, change the background color to blue, make it stand out a little bit more, drag it to the top, and bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to do it again. Insert a comment. Player two. That font color white. Boom, boom. And I'm going to put this one under user clicks. I'm going to do a few more. Bullet movement. I'll put that one under player two because this one right here dictates the bullet because the bullet when fired has these properties. Insert comment explosions. And these are just going to give us, you know, little notes about, well, what, what's under here? It help, helps us organize it. So I know that this is for player one. This is for the bullet. These are for the explosions. And now what we need to do is go ahead and start copying and pasting some code here and then putting it under player two, because I don't want to, you know, redo everything. So what I'm gonna do is right click this one, copy, because it has all this, think about it, it has all this code, all right, and has, uh, you know, and I just, I don't want to redo it all, I can, but I'd rather just right click, cop copy, and right click, paste. If it's not working, you have to right click the number itself in order to do it, and then I'll drag it under player two. So now here's the deal. For player two, if they click, I don't want it to be created from the player one's body, right? I want it to be created from the player two's body. So I'll right click edit. I'll click options. Um, give me a second. Edit. Relative to, yeah, you have to click relative to, right? And then it has to be from that body. And then you gotta go back here, do the same thing, edit. You gotta edit these. Player two body. Why is that not working? Player two. Oh, yeah, yeah. I skipped a step, actually. Yeah, I did. Um, what I forgot to do was I forgot to go to player two's body and create those variables. That's why that's not working. So we need to actually create two new variables. And just like with player one, if we go up here, we have distance to mouse and angle to mouse. It's the same thing. It's distance to mouse and angle to mouse. Distance to mouse and angle to mouse. That's why that wasn't working. <laughs> So I was skipping a step. Now we can go back up here. Edit. 
and then distance to mouse for player two's body, and then we'll get a valid expression. All right, and we're going to do the same thing for the rest of them. Player two body, that's all good. Now you'll notice that we've changed two of the bodies here. We still have one left, so we'll click edit, go down, and we'll do player two body, right? So now, if we actually stop at this point, uh, actually, uh, we don't want to do that just yet. Hold on a second. We want to we want to redo this code right here, right? But the problem is, um, I I would rather do this one myself. Always put it up here, and the reason for that is because. I, you're gonna have to delete these anyways and put them for the player two's body. So I mean, why not just do it all over again? So let's go ahead and let's just do it. We gotta set just like up here. We gotta set positions. Let's do that. Um, we gotta do set positions, and then we gotta do set distances. So whichever one we do first it doesn't matter. Let's do the turret set position. See position, position here, and then relative to the tank, zero zero, good to go. That looks just like that one. And then we got to set angle, and then for this code we have to do. We're going back to our our first one. Now remember, these are going to be in the instructions as well. But that's the code that we're going to use because we want to angle it to the player 2's body. Set it to 0. Now that's there. It looks identical to that one. So now for this body, we had all this stuff. So we're going to do the same thing. So what we're going to do is alternate variable set. We're going to set distance to mouse. Once again, these are all in the instructions. All these will be in there. And notice how it's player 2 body, player 2 body. We have... Um, have it related to that second player's body. Then we're going to do set angle to mouse. So now we're going to do set angle to mouse. Cool. Boom. And then we're going to do crosshair. How do we do that? Set X position. Do that was X position to X mouse. E. I did the wrong one. There it is. X mouse. Position Y. And it's going to be Y. Now, why this is important is we're going to make turns later on. So, if whosever turn it is, it's going to come in here or it's going to come in here. Let's go ahead and let's play this. We click F7. We see our turret, and if you look, the turrets do move. And the problem is they both are exploding at the same time. So we have like World War V going on here. But it works. But this is our, our indicator. I would definitely uh, stop it here and make sure that it definitely is playing for you guys. And it's definitely working. If not, go back. This is what the code currently looks like. And I'm going a little fast on this one, but you guys definitely have the ability to pause and go back and all that um, jazz. And you can also have the instructions to go by as well. This is just like a you know, tutorial. I don't want to take too much time. We still have uh, a little bit more left to do. But the good news is, is that we've done a lot of work so far. So the next thing what we have to do is we need to click our tanks button. We've got to create some global variables. We have gravity, but what I want to do is create two new variables. One called current player turn and then another one called you could call it really anything you want turn cooldown is what we are going to call it and we're going to set them both to zero and this is going to be used um to make sure that we can well obviously uh change player turns right so what we're going to want to do is change it so that way, um, well, I mean, let's just watch, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to player one. And in here, we're going to click, we're going to right click that and we're going to click insert. 
And when we do that, we're going to want to do the special condition here. Right click that. And then compare to global value. And then you'll see this pop up. What we're going to do is we're going to want to do compare that to zero. And then what we're going to want to do down here in player two is do the same thing. Insert. Compare global value. We're going to change that to one. Oh, wait. That's going to be the current player turn. So when it's zeros and it left clicks, this happens. When it's one and it left clicks, this happens. That way we can create the bullet from the first body if it's player turn zero. And we'll create the bullet from the second one's body if it's player turn one. Then what we're going to want to do is do insert special condi condition, compare value. Turn cooldown is zero. We're going to do actually that for both of them. Now what this is going to do is if any of them get hit, we want to make sure that the game is no longer working. So we're actually going to create a, a, a working like if then statement. Um, down here we're going to create a statement where turn cooldown turns into a, a different number. If anything gets, if any of the tanks get collided, but that's later on, right? Uh, now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that turns are being taken. So let's do player one first, right? We'll, we'll click in here in special condition. We're going to change a global value, okay? We're going to set turn cooldown to three. And then what we're going to want to do is change a, glo uh, uh, a global value. And we're going to do it this way. We're going to set current player turn to 1 minus current player turn. Now think about it. If player turn goes first, uh, player 1 goes first, the current cooldown is 0, right? So after they shoot, when they click, it's going to do 1 minus 0 which will equal 1. It'll then go to there. After they shoot, it'll be 1 minus 1, which will be 0. It'll go back to here. And let's actually copy this. Paste it. And that's what it should look like. We're going to do that for both players. Right-click. Set the turn cooldown to 3. And to do change global value, set current player turn that then what we're going to want to do add a little new comment in here we're going to do lower we're going to put that right above here then we're going to want to do is create a new condition in order to do that we are going to right click Compared to a global value. And then we're going to click that turn cooldown, and it's going to be greater than. So, boom. And then it'll be what we're going to want to do is subtract from. I'm going to do one. This way, no matter what. Think about it. It turns the cooldown goes to three. The tur the cooldown goes to three, and then every time something happens, it subtracts one from it. It just makes sure that our game continuously plays. So now what we should have something that looks kind of like this. All right. This is basically where we're at. This is what we've done. I don't see any issues here. We've changed all of our P2 bodies. We've changed it to 3, 1 minus, 1 minus. Um, what we should be able to do now is go back to our game, press F7. Whatever my pops up. Oh, it's still playing. Hey, that's why. Yeah.
but, but my crosshair is gone yeah it's because of my game whatever right it happens you've been it, you'll notice in the beginning of the video my crosshairs are showing up now they're not but no big deal it's just fusion overloading something anyways we're almost done we, uh, we the only thing left that we have to do is add a win condition and that's basically it so let's go ahead and let's um insert a comment let's call this win condition and so what we're going to want to do is make sure that when a bullet hits the tank or when the explosion hits the tank, the explosion destroys the tank. So what we're going to do is do new condition, right click. Uh, here's our active three object. Don't forget it's white, so it's super hard to see. Uh, right click it, collisions, when it overlaps another object. So let's do when it overlaps P1's body. Let's do it again. Right click, right click overlap another object and let's do p2 body cool that's actually like the hardest part to be honest right so let's think about it when the explosion overlaps player one's body we want to go to player one's body we want to destroy it we, the tank's turret we want to destroy it and then for if the explosion overlaps player two's body we want to destroy it we want to destroy interesting we're almost done we also want to create the condition where if it destroys it, we want to turn the game off. So we're going to change a global value, which will be the current player turn, and set that to negative 1. You could do negative 1, negative 4, anything other than 0 or 1, honestly. Change a global value, set it to negative 1. And what's cool about this is in the future, you could set something to if a condition equals... Uh, negative one display you could do like set it to negative one you can set this to negative two. Oh wait that wasn't oh i'm glad i looked at that because that's not y value that's current player turn you can set it to like negative one and negative two so like if current player turn equals negative one display the text that player two has won if it's current player equals negative two set the text that Current, you know, player one has one. You know, you can do so many things in the future on this. Um, but really, what it what it comes down to is we're we're basically done, and that should be the end to this tanks game. So let's go ahead and let's look. My crosshair is back. Oh, yep, check it out. And no more bullets after that. We are good to go. Let's try it again. I'm going to purposefully miss on tank one, and I'm gonna try my best. Oh, of course. Ah, if you if you if you destroy yourself. You lose. Look, no more turret. Uh, no more crosshair. Cool. Yep, yeah, and that's it. Wow. That's that's the end of this game, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we did that in record time. Ha! <laughs> we did that in a total of 18 minutes. And this is, by the way, what the final code looks like. This is what the rest of the code looks like. Um, that way you can compare it to yours. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed making tanks. There's so many ways to add more in the future. Mix and match. Have fun. Make it your own. Stay safe, ladies and gentlemen. It's tough times out there. And take care of yourself. I appreciate you watching.